Hey guys, my name is Devin, uh, and I'm an aspiring level designer, as you know. If you're subscribed to my channel, it has a bunch of things going on with, you know, UDK tutorials and just me streaming some bunch of stuff. Um, most, most of the time you just heard my voice, so now I got a web camera so you can see me talking as well while we work on, you know, these tutorials and streams. What I want to do today is I want to just go over as a video tutorial on how to do my, uh, my turret. Uh, but with in terms of that is when they tra tracks enemies instead of, instead of the player. So let me just jump in really quick, show you what uh, what it does right now. If you see my other videos, you already know what it does. But I'm going to show you right now, just in case. So let's jump in. And as you see, you got enemy running around. And it, you know, it's tracking its location. And we got multiple enemies spawn in one at a time. And it just keeps firing and kills them, and then tracks the new one as the new one spawned. So let's just take a quick look at how this Kismet uh, sequence looks. It's kind of a mess. Um, but I'll show you what, it, uh, what really gets done in a different actual level here. Let me open up this one. This one's cleaner. So what we have, you know, I use a bunch of uh, remote events and everything like that. I'll show you how to use that. But the main thing that happens is uh, we spawn in enemies here. We spawn an enemy, you know, put into a variable here called enemy. And we put them in a spawn point uh, path node uh, zero, 01. Uh, it's just one of these many path nodes that are in here, like this one or this one. Um, but that's basically what it does. It just spawns right here. And then when it's spawned, uh, one of two things happens here. One of the first things we do is we get the location, the rotation of the enemy here when they spawn, and we put their location to a variable here for a vector. And then what we do is we update that every tenth of a second just so we keep accurate track of where that enemy is at all times. And then we set the actor location of a dynamic trigger volume, which is this right here. A dynamic trigger volume is just similar to a trigger volume in that if something touches it at all, it will fire an event. But what makes it dynamic is your ability to move it in real time using that nay or whatever. Um, I'll show you what we do with that in a second. And then we attach it to the enemy that spawned up here in the actor factory. So every time an enemy spawned, we also attach this dynamic trigger volume to them. This is a 64 by 64 by 64 brush here. We just attach to them. And then what we do down here. Um, well, one of the one things we do, this is the one where that affects, you know, an enemy on a different team. So depending on what team you are, it'll fight uh, a certain team. So we do the team number check here. But um, in the normal t uh, tutorial here, we're just going to ignore that. Uh, what this actually does here is when the level's loaded, we go into this matinee. We have a movement track uh, for the turret mesh, that cylinder. We just have a movement track from 0 to 5 seconds. And we actually don't do any keyframes. We only do these two keyframes. But in these keyframes... We don't tell uh, the turret to move at all. We just keep it to where it is. But down here, we do a look at group name. We name that enemy. Uh, we use quaternion interpolation just so it rotates, you know, 360 degrees, no problem, smoothly. But one of the biggest things we do is down here under rotation mode. Usually it defaults uh, to keyframe. But what we want to do is to the MIR underscore look at group. And what this look at group is, is what this is over here at enemy. So it basically says, all right, uh, for movement and rotation here, uh, just rotate based on the position of whatever is attached to this lookout group. So then we create another group here named enemy. And then in Kismet, right here in enemy, we attach that dynamic volume, uh, that dynamic trigger volume, so that the turret's always rotating and looking at that dynamic trigger volume. And since that dynamic trigger volume is attached to the enemy when we spawn a projectile, we can just use the target location for the, as the enemy location and then the you know the spawn location of the projectile for where the turret is. So the projectile fires from the turret to wherever the enemy is located. And since we update the position of the enemy every tenth of a second, um, it fires pretty accurately. And one of the unique things we do here, uh, just for testing purposes, if you ever want to do this, um, when we do create a new enemy, uh, we add them to our object list that we call just an enemy list, so we can keep track of all the enemies that you know ever existed and do currently exist and haven't died yet. So what we do is we do with the, whatever spawned into the enemy uh, object variable, we add it to our object list, the enemy list, and then we just keep track of how many enemies are 
there. So depending on how many entries are in this list, that's how many enemies will be into this variable. And then with each enemy that is you know, added to this list, we can add a death event to it. So every time an enemy dies, they are taking, they, or that enemy is taken out of the object list, that enemy list, and we update the number of enemies uh, variable. Um, so if you have one enemy out, then the turret kills it. That enemy is then removed uh, from that object list. And then we compare the number of enemies to the number zero. So if there are zero enemies in the level, what we do is we use this um, remote event here to come back up and just spawn a new actor. So the whole process starts over again. Now let's do a quick run through of all the variables here. Uh, the first variable we have is just a blank object variable that we put in. So whatever spawned from our actor vector, uh, actor factory uh, is put into an empty object variable and then that is occupied to whichever enemy is spawned. So in this actor factory, if you look down here, we just spawn a UT pawn. I name them uh, test enemy. And then in the inventory list, I just I don't give them anything. And I force deathmatch AI so he moves around and everything like that. And then the next thing I make here is a vector for the enemy location so that we can keep track of it. Uh, the enemy that is um, every tenth of a second to know exactly where in 3D space he is. Um, next we have that enemy list, that object list we use to keep track of all the enemies that have ever been spawned into the level. Um, next we have the number of enemies here. Uh, obviously we're going to default at zero because when the level's over we're going to start off with zero and it'll add one to it. And then when that enemy dies, this, um, this integer variable will go back to zero, and every time it is zero, we spawn a new actor, so it just constantly brings in a new enemy when an enemy is killed. The next thing we do here is we uh, get the entered actor for that turret, that cylinder I have in the level. We give it its own object variable there, and we use that to um, use it for the matinee when we do need to reference it for animation there. And we also have the effect error for the turret location, so when we do need to spawn projectiles like those rockets, we know exactly where to spawn them from. And then we have a team number here. This is just for the team AI. So if you're on red and the other person's on blue, this way we can track uh, and just fire at whoever's blue. And we could also have, like, if you ever want to have this in, like, a multiplayer, you know, capture a flag kind of match, there could be a turret dead center in the map, and, you know, there could be buttons throughout the map where you switch it, and the turret starts trying to fire at the opposite enemy. So if I was on red and it was firing at my team, I, I pulled the switch, and then it'll start firing at blue instead until another switch is pulled. So I think that'll be a cool way to not use this. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going to start off from scratch here. So, so let's go to file, new level. And it doesn't matter, let's just do midday. I'm not going to save any of the things that I've saved so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create our turret. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to UDK game here, type in cylinder, filter for static meshes, and here it is. So let's just left click, drag and drop that in. Let's go rotate it in an orientation that I like, just keep it at dead center here. Put a distance, you know, whatever looks good for you, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this tutorial as it's just functionality purposes. So the next thing we need to do, since this will be animating a matinee, we need to make it an interpactor so that UDK recognizes that it can rotate and that it can be dynamic instead of just a static mesh. So let's right click on that. Let's go to, um, where is it, convert, and convert to a mover. And when you do convert uh, static meshes to a mover, uh, if it did ever have collision, um, that collision is removed. Uh, by default, and since these uh, the rockets are going to be spawning from inside the cylinder, we really don't want to give it any collision right off the bat, because if it does, the rockets will just explode in here, because it will be colliding with the collision there. So now that we have that going, uh, what I want to do really quick, you know, I want to get, I want to set the padding for our AI here. So let's just right click, let's go down to add actor, and let's find path node. So the path nodes look like little apples, or peaches, you know, whichever floats your boat. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to Alt and then drag to create a copy. And I'm just going to scatter copies, you know, just do a full circle so that our AI can, you know, move around a little bit freely here. That should be enough. And let's just build AI pads right now really quick. So now what we need to do is basically uh, set it up so enemies will spawn. So I want to do one enemy at a time just for, you know, clarity purposes, just something really quick and easy. So what I want to do, I'm going to select this one path down in front of me. I'm going to open up Kismet. 
just keep the casement gates open in two separate windows here. So what we're going to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our actor factory. We're going to create that and have it so our actor factory spawns the appropriate enemies where we want them. So the first thing we're going to do is go into actor factory here. And under factory right now, it's set to none. So let's click on this blue arrow. Let's go all the way down. We're going to look for UT factory AI. This is the appropriate AI that we need for, you know, just to have, uh, I believe his name is Liam, just that robot AI there. We want to make sure we spawn the right guy. Um, and then what we need to do down here, we need to force deathmatch AI just so it moves around. You know, it, it, you know, it feels like it's in, like the bot thinks it's in a deathmatch, so it'll be moving around looking for uh, other players and everything like that. And for controller class, uh, we're going to leave that at none. Uh, for one reason or another, I'm not too sure why, but if we use UT bot or UDK bot, uh, the pawn just doesn't, you know, spawn at all. So let's just leave that at um, none for controller class. And then for pawn class, let's bring that down to UT pawn. And if for any reason, if you want to name your pawn, I'll name them my name because I like my name. So we're going to leave it that way. And um, for get default inventory, we can just uh, un leave that unchecked because we don't want to have him have a weapon. We don't really want him to fire at us right now. Uh, so just for testing purposes, I want to make sure we don't take damage from this guy. And so now what we need to do is set up an initial event that will cause this enemy to spawn in the first place. And that's going to be when the level is first loaded. So I'm going to just go to new event level loaded. Move it over here and we're going to just put this into spawn actor. Now that we have that set up, uh, we got to tell it what's uh, where to spawn from and that's why we have this AI uh, path selected in here. So with that selected, let's go to spawn point. Let's right click and do a new object var using path node underscore one. So now whatever spawns from here will spawn at this path node. So what we have to do now is create an object variable to tell uh, what is spawned at this point. So when we put a blank object variable in or, uh, at the beginning, it doesn't know what it is. Uh, but once something spawns and is put into an object variable, it says, yep, I got, an a I got an enemy in this object variable now. So that's what we need to do. We need to right click. Let's go to new variable. Now let's go to new object and then make that object variable. And for that var name, let's just call an enemy. Let's put them over here on the side. Because what I like to do is I like using name variables instead. Uh, it just keeps everything clear for me at least. It helps people understand what's going on. So I'm going to expect a type. Let's go down to object and find the var name. We're going to just do enemy because that's what we named our empty object variable earlier. Let's put them into spawn. So now whatever spawn put is put into our enemy variable. So let's jump in real quick. Let's double check to make sure this is working. Okay, and it's not, and the reason why is because I always forget. Let's go to World Properties, and then the default game type, we've got to make UT game, and then for the game type for PIA, uh, PIE is Play and Editor, so let's do UT game as well. So let's jump back in again. We'll shoot see an enemy spawn, and there he is. And he's, he's doing his lap around the, he's doing a lap around the box here. Um, he just chooses dynamically where to run from, and then he sees me. He wants to kill me, but since he doesn't have a gun, he can't. So that's exactly what I want to do right now. And I just killed myself, technically, I guess. So that's working fine. So that's good. So let's go back in. And what we want to do now is I want to set up an, uh, an a, what is it called, an, a remote event here. So let's go to New Action, Event, and Activate Remote Event. And what remote events are, instead of having just generic events like Level Loader or anything like that, we can actually make specific events fire based on actions that occur. So for this event, I'm going, instead of calling it default event, let's call it uh, death event. Now let's plug it into finish. And the reason why we have a red X here is because there's two parts to remote events. Uh, one is the action that causes the event to fire, and then the second part is the actual event that fires. So to get the op to get the other end of, the, of that um, event, uh, the, act, the remote event, so let's go to uh, new event. Now let's go to remote event. I'm just going to put it down here. And we also have to change its name from default event to death event, just so they know where to talk to. And now we have a check down here. For some reason this doesn't update right away, so what I usually do is I just delete it and then control Z and then we get a check. So it knows now uh, when this is finished spawning an enemy, it'll activate this event right here. And what we want to do with this death event is we want to attach uh, death event to our pawn so when they die we can make something happen. 
So let's go to new action, actor, no, go to event, and then attach to event. Plug that into the attach to event, and then our attach is going to be our enemy here. So let's control Z, control V. And then our event is going to be the death effect. So let's go to right click, new event, I believe it's under pawn, and then death. So we have our death here, so let's plug it in that way. And then what we need to have happen is when the enemy dies, we want to remove them from the object list that we're going to create. And when we remove from the object list, then we want to compare how many enemies are in existence right now. And if it's equal to zero, we want to spawn another enemy in. So what we need to do is we need to create a new actor here. So let's go to New Action, Object List, and then Modify Object List. So for right now, let's just plug in the out of this death event into the Remove From List. Because when we have an enemy die, we're going to remove them from that list. And then our object reference is going to be our enemy here, so let's control C, control V. We're also going to plug that into our instigator as well, so we know uh, whoever dies is going to be our enemy here. And what we need to do now, since we have two other variable outputs for object list var and our list entries count, we're going to create two new variables. So let's go back over here to our variables list. So let's right click, let's go to new variable, object, and then object list. And let's name the var name there, let's name of enemy list. And then last but not least, let's create another variable here. Let's make it a new integer. And then let's call it number of enemies. So now we can keep track about how many enemies are there. Since we only want to have one enemy in the level at a time, this would be a good way to track that. And we're going to leave the default value at zero here. So let's go back over here. And what I want to do, I just want to control C, control V, this enemy named variable. And then under expected type, Let's change that to object list. And then let's change the var name to enemy list. And we got an X because there should be a space in between. There we go. Just hook that right up. Now we got a match. So let's control C, control V this one more time. Change the expected type to integer. And let's name this number of enemies. And then we get the check. So we're good. So now we remove whatever enemy was ever in this enemy list. And then uh, what we need to do is we need to do a check. We need to do a comparison here. So let's go to New Condition, Comparison. We're going to compare ints here. And what we're going to compare is the number of enemies that exist in our level. We're going to compare that to the number zero. So let's right click on the B here and go create new variable for int. It defaults to zero. And so now what we need to do is when A equals B, so when number of enemies equals zero, this is what we want to do. We want to do another remote event here. So let me control C, control V, copy this. Let's name this uh, spawn enemy. Let's just plug that from A equals B to there. Now what we need to do, we need to copy this remote event here. So let's control C, control V. Uh, if it's ever plugged into anything, all you have to do is hit Alt, left click, and it'll just attach there. And so now let's name, what do we name this over here? We named it spawn enemy. So let's change the event name to spawn enemy. And let's just update that. Good. And let's plug that right into spawn actor. So now what happens right now is uh, the level loads initially, and at that point we spawn an enemy. That enemy spawns at path node 0, 1, which is this one right here we had selected. And then whatever spawn is put into our enemy object variable list here. That was empty initially over here, but then it's filled with an enemy when one is spawned. Then what we need to do here that happens is we spawn, we create this uh, remote event for the death event. So whenever an enemy is created, uh, a death event is fired. And what this event does is that it attaches the death event to our enemy so that every time an enemy is killed, something happens. And what happens is that enemy is removed from our object list and then we compare the number of enemies that exist on our level to the number of zero. So if there's no enemies left, we're going to go back and spawn a new one, and the whole process starts over. So that's good so far, but we need to do one more thing to make sure this works. And that is we need to copy, uh, control C, control V, this remote event here. Let's change the event name uh, to add enemy. Let's plug finished into that. Now what we need to do is copy and paste this other remote event here. And we call this one, we call this add enemy. 
So let's rename this one to add enemy. Obviously we have to update this one because it doesn't update automatically, but now we got that check. Let me maximize this. And now what we need to do with add enemy, we want to initially add uh, the enemy that spawned into our object list. Because right now all we do is remove it from the list, but if nothing's in there, if it's never added to the list, you know, we can never take it out. So first we need to do, we need to add that enemy. So to do that, uh, let's control C, control V, this modified object list variable. For right now, let's disconnect all these by holding Alt and left clicking on them. Let's just move this into position here. And then what we need to do is we're going to add to the list. And then we're going to control C, control V, the enemy name variable, print to the object ref, and copy and paste the enemy list object variable here. Put it there. And last but not least, we got to put the number of enemies. And there we go. So now every time a enemy is spawned, uh, it is added to the list. And then if it ever dies, it is removed from that list. So let's see if that works right off the bat. So let's just jump in. Let's just kill this guy and see if a new one spawns. Yep. So far it's working. Okay, cool. Cool. It's working. So what I want to do now that this is working how it is, I want to, you know, make this a little prettier. Not in terms of aesthetics, you know, making sure everything's clean. So what we've got to do is we're going to hold Control and Alt and just left click, drag, and marquee selection. Right now I'm selecting the death event. And I'm going to hit the C key, create a new comment. And I'm going to just uh, name this attach to, or attach death to enemy. So now we have that all clean and pretty. So let's just move this aside. And then we're going to do for this one, same idea. What we're going to need to do is Alt, Control, left click, drag, marquee select, hit C key. Then I'm going to name this one add enemy to list. Cool. Move that over there. Now what I'm going to do over here, I'm just I'm not going to really name this one for now because we may need to add to it a little later, but I'm just going to move it up over here. And I'm going to move our object bars a little closer in. I'm not going to comment this one yet because we still have more to do. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do for, uh, before we move on, we're going to add a couple more variables here. So we're going to make uh, two vector variables. Uh, one uh, vector variable to represent the location of our enemy when it spawns. And then we're going to do a vector variable to represent the location of our turret in 3D space. But that one's not really going to be moving, it's just going to be rotating. So it won't translate, it won't move, but it will rotate. So let's just start in, let's create those vector variables. So let's right click, new variable. Let's go down to vector. We're going to leave the vectors at 0, 0, 0 because they're going to change dynamically you know, with our script. But all I want to do is just change the variable name. I'm going to change this to enemy location. So, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to control C, control V. And then just change the enemy location to turret location. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new level loaded event. And then at the beginning of the level, when the level is loaded, what I want to do is I want to get the uh, I want to get the rotation and the location, everything like that, of our enemy as it moves and it moves around. So let's go new action here. I believe it's under actor, and then get location and rotation. So let's plug those two together. Our target is going to be our enemy here. Control C, Control V that. Attach it to target. And then for the location, we're going to go right click. Let's do a new variable. Let's go down to name variable here. Under expected type, let's change that to vector. And then for the find bar name, let's type in enemy location. We got that check mark, so that's good. And then what we need to do, we need to right click on the out output here. Set the activate delay. I'm going to do 0 0.1 seconds. So every tenth of a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop here. So that every tenth of a second, uh, we're going to begin the location of our enemy. So now what we need to do in our editor here, well, let me shrink that. Uh, let's grab our builder brush here, this red builder brush. Let's grab that. And then under here under brushes, let's right click to bring this pop-up up. up. And then change the 256 by 256 by 256. Let's change that to 64 by 64 by 64. Build, X that out. And then what we need to do from this builder brush, we're going to create our dynamic trigger volume. So let's go to volumes here. And towards the top, we'll see dynamic trigger volume. 
So let's click on that. Now let's move our Builder Brush and now we'll have our Dynamic Trigger volume right here. So let's select that. Go back into our Kismet. And then what we need to do, we need to right click, do New Action, Actor, Set Actor Location. And let's just drag this to the Set Actor Location. Our target, we need to make sure we have this right uh, highlighted in our editor selected here. And then in Kismet, let's go to Target, right click, do new object while we're using to have a trigger volume zero. And then for the location, we're going to do the enemy's location. So now what should happen is when an enemy spawned, this dynamic trigger volume will attach to them and follow them as they move. So let's see if that works. So right now we don't see anything. That's because we need to show the volume. So what we need to do is if you hope, if you press the tilde key, we'll get the command prompt, or if you just press tab, it'll show up on the bottom. What we need to type in to show volumes is just that, show volumes. And there, we, ha we see that the volume is attached. Now when he's running with us, you know, we see that dynamic trigger volume is just updating with him. So now he's following us. And then when we kill him, the dynamic trigger volume attaches to the new one. Which is exactly what we want. So let's go back. Now one of the one things now we have to do is set up our turret rotation here so that uh, when the enemy spawned, the turret will look at the dynamic trigger volume, which is attached to our enemy. So let's go back into Kismet. Uh, first, let's just isolate this. Let's, you know, marquee select, comment this, and let's just do um, attach trigger volume to enemy. So there we go. Just move that into position, get that out of the way. So now what we're going to do here, we're going to do a new level loaded event. Right click, new event, level loaded. And now what we're going to need here is a couple of things. First thing we're going to do in Kismet, let's right click, do new matinee. Now with our matinee created, let's go into our editor here. Let's left click on our turret. Now back into matinee, let's go there. Now making sure our turret is selected in our editor, let's right click in the gray area over here. Let's do add new empty group, put in this turret. And then what we need to do is we're going to right-click on the turret. We're going to go down to Movement Track. And this is where we need to make those special adjustments here. So they'll uh, do rotation based on the Look At group. So the first thing we're going to do is just go move this green slider all the way to 5 seconds. And then with this main black slider, when we do create a Movement Track, it automatically creates a, a keyframe at keyframe 0 at 0 seconds. We're just going to drag it all the way to 5 seconds. It doesn't really matter how long this animation is. I just like to do it to 5 seconds because it's already made for us right here. So now that we have the two keyframes going from 0 to 5 seconds, what we need to do is we need to name the look at group. So I'm going to type in enemy just so we give it a name. And we've got to make sure uh, when we when we do create this group in matinee, we name it enemy as well so we'll know what to look at. So now what we need to do, we need to check quater uh, quaternion interpolation just so that it rotates properly and everything like that. And then down here under rote mode, basically that means rotation mode, instead of keyframed, we can tell it to do the look at group which is our enemy. So now what we need to do is we go here, create a new group, name him enemy, and that's all we need to do. You don't need to create any movement tracks. As long as we have the name enemy there, what that does is in the matinee node, it creates the enemy output here. And what we need to do for the enemy, uh, one of the things I learned, you can't actually attach the enemy object uh, variable here. What we need to do is attach that trigger volume. That's why it exists. So it's Control C, Control V, that trigger volume. And let's put it into the enemy here. And then let's plug Loaded Invisible into play. And that should be all that it is that it will take for this uh, turret to actually you know, track the enemy. So let's press play and see what it does. And there we go. Okay. And what we're seeing here is it froze, it's not working, and I know exactly why. So let's go back, let's go back into Kismet. Let's go into our matinee here, we need to set it to looping, just so it continues to do that no matter what. So with that correction made, let's play again, now we'll see it update.
And what I want to do instead of the level loaded now, uh, let's just attach this here to as soon as an enemy spawned. Let's just do the finished into this matinee. So let's see if it still works in that in that regard. And it is awesome. And it's following perfectly great. And now let's just correct, instead of having it do the turret like that, um, instead of interfactor underscore zero, what I want to do is just name variable just to keep it clean. So let's do, let's right click here. Let's go to new variable. Let's do a new named variable. What we're going to do is just swap them out here really quick. So let's unplug the turret by holding alt and left clicking there. Let's do object variable. Let's just name this turret. And let's go over here for interactor zero, which is our turret cylinder. Let's just name that turret. Then we get that check. And then let's just move this guy back over here by our name variables. And now what we need to do, I'm just going to Oh, control, left click marquee, select that, comment the same main hub, just so that we know this is where everything kind of happens and goes down. So now we're almost done. All we need to do now is spawn those projectiles so that the turret will fire at the enemy when they're spawned. So in order to do that, let's do a new, um, let's do a new um, remote event here, control C, control V, and let's name this uh, turret fire. Put it under finished here. And then control C, control V, one of these uh, remote events here. Hold alt, left click, get that out of there. And drag this one all the way towards the bottom. Name this one turret fire. And then just update the guy up here because uh, for some reason it doesn't do it automatically. So now what we need to do is every time an enemy is spawned, what we need to do is go to new action, spawn projectile. Now the spawn location, let's right click, do new variable, new named variable, give it the vector expected type, under find var name, for the spawn location, it's going to be turret location, attach that there, and now the target location is going to be the enemy location, so control C, control V, turret location here, rename it enemy location, And then for instigator, we just need to have a blank object variable in, or otherwise it won't spawn a projectile. And then we need a left click on the projectile here. For do projectile class, let's just do rocket. So now that's all set up. But also what I want to do, I want to set up a trace for our turret here, so that if the uh, the when the turret's looking at the enemy, if the enemy is behind this box here and the, and the turret can't see it, the enemy, it won't fire at the enemy. So in order to do that, we need that trace variable, an actor. So let's go to right click. New action, I believe it's in misc, all the way down to trace. So let's set that up. So the trace will go into the uh, turret fire event right away. Now the start object is going to be the turret. So let's go up here, copy and paste our turret variable. Bring it down, set it up to start. And then for the end, it's going to be our enemy. Control C, Control V that, and then do that to the end. So now what we need to do is if there's no obstruction, meaning you know the turret can see the enemy here, and the trace between the turret and enemy is complete, uh, we want to fire the projectile. So let's go do that. Connect those together. And then we're going to need to do a loop here of one second, just so every second it'll fire at the at the enemy there. Uh, but if there is an obstruction, we want to do another loop here for a second. Uh, so it'll keep checking even there if there's an obstruction there. And that's all we need to do. So let's see if that works. Let's see if the turret will fire at our enemies here. Okay, and what we're seeing have happen here is the rockets are actually spawning in the center here, not from the turret. So give me a second here. Let's figure out why. Alright, and the reason why is because we're not getting the location of the turret. So what we need to do, let's just copy this entire sequence here. Control C, Control V that. Bring it down here. Uh, we can get rid of the set actor location, the dynamic volume here. Uh, but instead of enemy location for that vector, what we need to change that to is turret location. 
And then instead of the enemy, let's swap that out with the turret. And keep everything else the same. So now that we're updating the uh, the location of the turret and everything like that. Now the the rockets will spawn from the right place. So instead of uh, the comment for the, uh, the yellow outline there, instead of that saying attach trigger volume to enemy, we're going to do, uh, let's see, update turret location. Now let's see if that corrected our problem. Yep. Now every time it dies, it keeps updating. Get away from me. And it's working the way we need it to. This turret is doing work. Um, so now all we need to do is just a little bit of cleanup here. Now that it's doing everything we needed to do. So let's just copy this sequence here. Uh, comment it saying uh, spawn rockets. And then all we need to do now is just uh, highlight all of our variables. Press C, name them variables. And there we go. So let's play that one more time. And we see the trace working here when the enemy goes behind that this giant box here. The turret can't see it and it won't fire. And there we go. So let's go over every little bit one more time. So in our main hub here, when the level is first initially loaded, we spawn an actor right off the bat. And what we need to, what we do then is we attach that death event, which is down here. So for every time an enemy spawn, we attach the death event to it. Um, when it dies, the enemy, when it dies, it is removed from the object list we create. And then at that point is when we check to see how many enemies are in the level. And if there are zero enemies, which there would be if we do one enemy at a time and it dies, uh, then we spawn a new enemy and it kind of does a loop like that and it does the check. Um, what else we do is when an enemy spawns, we do we add that enemy to the object list initially. So it's just something simple here. We just do our modify object list and we put our enemy, our enemy list, and the number of enemies there. Um, one other thing we do is we do the turret fire, which is uh, down here. And all it does is it does a trace, checks to see if the, uh, the turret can see the enemy. If it can, then all it does is spawn a projectile every second. And if it's obstructed, then it checks every second to see if it'll become unobstructed and then continue firing from there. And then what we need to do, we need to make sure we update our turret location just to make sure that the rockets will spawn from the right uh, space where the turret is. And we also need to make sure we update the location of the enemy and make sure that we attach that dynamic trigger volume because uh, when that dynamic trigger volume is attached, uh, that's the main thing that our matinee looks at for the turret. The turret's actually looking at the dynamic trigger volume, and not actually the enemy, but since the trigger volume is attached to uh, the enemy, it looks like to the player that the turret is tracking the enemy. So one more time, run through it and check it out. And that's basically it. Um, I'm not really going to go over much about the team aspect. I can show you one more time uh, what the AI one looks like. The only difference is we check the team number of the enemy. So uh, the enemy that spawned, we check the team number and we assign it a team number if we need to. And then we check, we tell the turret, all right, kill the enemies with team number 0 or 1 or 2 or 20 whichever one so that the only thing that changes is we compare the team number that the enemy has against the team number that we want this turret to fire at and then depending on that so if the tur if the team the enemy is on team 0 and we want to check team 1 when a team 0 enemy is spawned the turret won't even track its position and it won't fire at the at that enemy but if the enemy is team number 1 then the matinee will track that enemy and fire at him. So that's basically how that's done. So that's the whole tutorial there. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment with any questions. If you have any ideas for a new video for me, if you like what I'm doing, if there's anything I can improve on, definitely let me know because I want to make sure these are educational, make sure these are fun, easy, 
I want to make sure I keep things interesting because, you know, a lot of people like these turrets that I've been working on, which I do appreciate. Uh, but I also want to, you know, move on forward from this, you know, make new things, you know, uh, do new gameplay mechanics to try to make things interesting. So if you have any questions on this turret, you know, comment on this video. Um, and almost all the time I respond and I give you my email and we can talk that way. Um, so make sure you share this too with anyone who's trying to learn the uh, UDK or just game development if you're interested in that. Um, so thank you guys again, guys. You guys are great. We just hit over 100 subscribers, so I'm really happy on that. So thank you guys again for watching and supporting me, and um, I'll see you next time we do a tutorial, okay? Thanks, guys.